Um, our next presentation focuses on how intelligent automation helps organizations succeed in today's digital economy. And to talk about that today is the Chief Technology Officer from Swiss Post Solutions, Mr. Lucas Habeisen. Give him a round of applause. There you go. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. I would like to talk to you about uh, the power of unstructured data and what can we do with unstructured data, how can we manage them, and how can we use them to further drive the automation. If we look at, uh, at the amount of data we are having at the moment, if we're talking about automation, we are focusing in the automation area mainly about structured and semi-structured data, about forms. And here, of course, with digital transformation, we have the uh, option that we automate them and we can automate them quite fast and also be very efficient. If you look at the amount of data that we have, we see that about 80% of the data we are, we are seeing today are unstructured. And this amount is raising and is getting bigger and bigger. And even if the, all this data is going to be uh, digital, it's still going to be unstructured and still needs to be managed in one way or the other. So what I would like to show you is how we can manage unstructured data, what are typical use cases, and how can we use unstructured data, email, customer communication, in order to make sure we can automate and we can improve our customer services. Quickly before we start, what about Swiss Post Solutions? We are part of Swiss Post, typical postal company. We are focused on BPO business. BPO business means we are looking at document management, document input, document output, and typical mailroom services with a strong focus on the input and digital transformation. Head offices in Zurich focused on uh, BPO. Here we see we do about two to three billion uh, processes a year, and we are operating with about 7,000 employees in up to 17 countries with the main focus Europe and uh, North America. Now, if we look at, at, at uh, customer service, if we look at how do we manage customer service, here we see the back office. The back office is one of the key elements to make your customers happy, to make sure that your customers are staying with you and that they get the experience they are expecting. So, of course, at the beginning, you have the fancy apps, you have the cool interfaces, you have the fast and the reliable interface, you have all the ways you can manage in order to get in. Now, if you have the customers actually using all these, these interfaces to communicate with you, it is key that in your back office, you can act as flexible and as fast as you do on the front end on the typical digital entry barrier. If you cannot make this, the customer will very fast realize that uh, the front end is good, but the whole process does not work very well. So what are the challenges? Which challenges do we face today with the customer? Let's see. Yeah, here we go. Um, what kind of challenges do we face today on the customer journey, on the customer communication front end? These are the typical challenges we see omnichannel. Different uh, customer segments, different ages, they uh, like to use different different uh, communication channels. Also, depending what they want from a specific request from a company, they are using different, different channels. Sometimes it's email, sometimes it's chat, sometimes it's a, it's a phone call. Then, of course, we have the mobile experience. People are using laptops, tablets, mobile phones, whatever. All this needs to be managed, and at the end of the day, it needs to be mapped on the same customer journey. So that's very important that you get the same customer experience regardless which input channel you are using. At the same time, the customers are expecting as well that uh, fast processing of data. In the past, if you sent a letter and you got two or three or four days later an answer, that was OK. Today, if you send an email and you don't get an answer from a company within 24 hours, you think, what's wrong? What's wrong with the customer service? Why are they ignoring me? And of course, if you look at WhatsApp, if you look at social media, in this case, of course, we are looking at even faster times. Then, of course, we want to have personalization. So the people, they want to be, they want to be approached in a, in a personal fashion. So they want to have a personalized content. 
And of course, the customer, they want to communicate to you in an unstructured way. People like to communicate unstructured. So who likes to fill out web forms? Or who likes to do these kind of things like web forms, looking the customer number, looking all this information up? Nobody really does it. And that's why we need to focus on the unstructured data content. I say yesterday, but still is somehow today. This is a typical value chain we see in many companies. We go in and we look at how their business processes work. So you see that you have different processes. On the upper hand, you have the typical asynchronous communication. At the lower end, you have synchronous communication like chatbots and phone. At the moment, we are focusing on the asynchronous communication. So that's the, the area where we can do a lot of automation. What we see is there is a business process, and the business process often is attached to the input channel. So if there is something paper fax, there is one business process. If there is an email, there is another business process. Social media is another business process. Independent what the customer wants. So if the customer asks for a contract by email or by, by, by letter, it's the same request, it's the same process, but you have different business processes. So what, is the, what are the issues, what are the challenges you are facing with such an approach? Often you also have attached teams. So that means there is a certain team size linked to each of these processes. So at the moment, if you have 80% of your processes on the paper side and 20% on the digital side, you also have the teams like this. Now, depending on on where the, the volume shifts. So if you see a fast shift from paper to digital, you suddenly have too many people on the paper process and not enough people on the digital process. And because you have independent business processes, it's not so easy to shift the people. So it's not so easy to shift all these volumes. And the second thing, of course, depending which channel the customer is using, the experience is different. So you may have a customer using the email channel which is quite happy, works quite well, while the customer using the letter, for example, waits for a very long time and gets a totally different uh, experience. So now, how do we approach this? And what are typical cases, how we can do this kind of automation? How can we manage structured and unstructured data? So we start with unstructured data, different kinds, typical emails, text, WhatsApp, social media, but also in the future, we're looking at pictures, movies, whatever is there unstructured, using artificial intelligence, using some kind of, of, of learning algorithms in order to structure the data. So we're going to get structured data. And once we have the data structured, so once we know what a customer wants, we know what is the request from the customer, we can then apply different um, automation algorithms. We can use standard, um, standard IT automation, but we can also use uh, RPA, whatever is there, in order to further automate the uh, customer journey. One example for ex is, is, is what we have from uh, typically postal customer services, that about 40 to 50% of the people, they ask, where is my parcel? If you want to understand that the customer asks, where is my parcel? You can also automate a lot of these requests, or they ask questions like, when is the, when is the, when is the, what's the opening hours of a specific post office, or things like this. So if you look at, at emails and communications from customer, you see that the majority of these requests are quite simple ones and can be automated to a very fair extent. If you look a little bit specific, we see here documents or any kind of communication coming into the into the, into, the, into the game, and then we're going to get the structure out of it. And that's, that's where afterwards all the, the big data analytics, all the automation, all the management, actually what all the additional tools that you have can start. So you're going to start, you're going to get concern number three, you have some details, you have a client number, you have maybe a new address, and that allows you then to manage and to, 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 to manage all these topics in a, in a decent way automate, analytics, and so on. Now, what's the future state? So what's the state of the, of, the, of the implementation that we would like to have is, again, same picture. We have here all the different input channels. 
And now, rather than having a different business process, we start with a centerpiece of, a, of an element that says it reads, understands the content, it categorizes the content, and it extracts key data. And then, in the second part, we have then the processing, the solution, and we also have then the, the automation of the business process. That's what we can do here now with it. Also very important is that if you look at these kind of processes, if, if you look at these kind of technologies, we always look at manual exception handling. It's not going to be possible that you automate all the content. It's not going to be possible that you do all these, these changes and all these uh, specific topics fully automated. Because at the end of the spectrum, you have too many special cases, you have too complex business processes. They often happen not very often, and you can do them in a manual way. Now, if you're going to get a, to a structure like this, you're going to be focusing on business processes. If you are focusing on business processes, that means you can add and attach additional channels quite easily. It goes through the same chain, and you have your teams attached to the business process rather than to the input channels. And that's another thing that we see today. There is, we see banks accepting uh, uh, some, some trades via WhatsApp. We see some, some companies communicating with their customers through Snapchat. So there is a lot of things that we see. There's a lot of channels which are used at the moment, and most probably not all of these channels are going to survive. Some of them will come, they go again, and then they will disappear. And with such a model that you can attach all the processes, you will, you will be able to manage uh, your business processes in a very smart and in a detailed way. Also important, what is coming on here is speech to text. Speech to text is something that has gained a lot of um, additional uh, attention, especially with all these Alexas and devices from Google. So people really start talking to their devices. And with this, of course, we have a, a speech to text function. And we can have kind of an asynchronous communication as well. So this is the, the future model. This is the model how we want to manage and structure uh, unstructured data. Now, what are typical areas where we want to use this? I mean, of course, one of the core elements is customer service. Customer service is, is a very important piece. It is especially important because this is the area you cannot structure so easily. If you're a large corporation, you can actually, st you can actually tell your suppliers, that's the way I want to communicate. I want to receive all the invoices electronically, otherwise I don't pay them fast enough, and so on. So you can manage your suppliers quite well. Your customers, this is a bit a different story. We have seen some customers sending uh, large orders on a, on a napkin. You know, they order food for one million for, for, some, um, for some events. Now, if you, are, if, you are, if you are the supplier, you're not going to tell them, I only accept your order if you use the official form. You say, thank you very much. Can I process, please? And that's exactly why customer service is, is one of the key elements. And it's also something that is typically for people they don't like to communicate in structured forms. They don't like to fill out forms. And, and for me as well, if I want something from a company, I want to have an email address, I want to send them a request, and I want to have an answer. And I don't really care how the company itself is organized in the background, what are their processes, what are their departments. This is not of my concern. I just want to have an answer. Second area, of course, Travel expenses, also here, there's a lot of difference, especially if you're working in an area with a lot of international travel. There is a lot of different invoices. There's a, tough, a lot of different receipts, typical area for intelligent automation. And another very big area is the claims. So a typical claims area is something which you can automate. You can get a lot of information. Often, and this is very important as well if you are looking, for example, in the insurance market, you have your customers for many, many years. They pay the bill every year, and after 10 years, they have an incident, maybe something like a thunderstorm, and now their, their roof has a, has a hole. So they are getting back to the insurance, but of course, because it's a thunderstorm, they are not the only ones, so there's a lot of people having similar problems. And now this is quite a big challenge for companies like this. So you have a customer paying your bills for 10 years. There's an issue. 
and you have one time, you have one chance to serve this customer right. And this is, and this is then not so easy. And here again, automation can help you to make all the things better and faster so that your employees can focus on the more complex and on the more complicated cases. And that's what we discussed before, is again the balance between the digital experience and the legacy systems. If, if I'm listening to this, I mean often you can hear about what is the, the most efficient way, you can hear about Uber, you can hear about Airbnb, you can hear about all these cool companies which built their IT systems on a green field with the most modern technologies in the last 10 years. And they are of course fully automated, they are fully digital, and they have a lot of advantages on being very agile and very fast. But to be honest, for 95% of the companies, this is not true. They, have, they are there for years, they are, I mean like Swiss Post, we are here for 150 years and now our IT systems are not that old, but of course we have quite a couple of, 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 of years on our IT systems and this is not something that you're going to change overnight. It's not something you're going to change in, in one or two years. So what you need at the end of the day is you need to have systems, you need to have ways how you can have the agility you want, the, your customer wants from the front end, bring it back, automate it and connect it with your existing legacy systems and your process so that you are as agile as well. And that's at the end the key for uh, being uh, successful and also being agile in front of your customers so that you can uh, operate and bring new products to the market. Now last, I would like to focus on uh, two reference projects. Two reference projects, we have implemented reference projects which, which show how we can do this. We start in insurance. Here we're talking about the healthcare. Healthcare in, uh, in Switzerland, we are doing here, it's, it's about email categorization. Here a typical case, I mean, it's, it's, an, it's a financial, it's a financial, uh, financial email, so people ask questions like, when do I get the money from the insurance? How much more do I need to pay before the insurance kicks in? And then we have questions which, which are surprising sometimes. Do I, did I pay my bill already? These are all typical financial questions. They are not coming in on a structured, on a central piece, so they're coming in in very different ways in the insurance, and they travel through the organizations in different ways. Again, different customer experience. Some of them get the answer immediately, Others may get, need to wait a week because the, the, the email goes from one department to the other and after a couple of days, it reaches the right one. So what did we do? We used and focused all these emails on the central point and we use here typically this uh, natural language processing in order to categorize and structure the emails. So what we then have is different categories depending and mapped on the business case. This is very important, so it needs to be linked to the business case. If we do this kind of automation, we often look also at cases where we need to re-engineer the business process. So it's not just automate, it's also looking at the, at the business process. Here we had a lot of categories, and sometimes these categories, they were not very clear. So if you ask the people why is A and why is B, they said, yeah, the first team said uh, we have category A and the second team for the same case, they want to have category B. Now, if the people cannot distinguish between different categories, how the system can. So we, of course, took also the chance to reduce the number of categories and to focus further. So what we achieved is a 60% automation rate. So 60% of the emails coming in could have been automated because they were quite simple, they were quite straightforward questions, and then we could actually move forward. And what we also have is 40% still doing manual. And this is very important, again, these last 40%, you can then automate step by step, and you will stop at a certain moment because it's just not worth anymore. So this is quite a successful case on typical email categorization. The second case may be also looking at travel expenses. This is now less about, um, here we have the structuring of unstructured data. We moved it forward to the, to the user, to an app, but here a typical case, typical legacy system case, so that the travel expense management system doesn't offer proper interfaces. Interfaces cannot be done because the, the system will be replaced soon. Soon means in one or two years. 
and maybe one or two years become three or four years. But of course, as long as there is a process of replacing a system, nobody is going to implement new interfaces. So in this case, we are talking about 1.2 million business trips. It's quite high voluntarily. And of course, the people, there's a high backlog as well in the, in the team. So the people who hand in their expenses have to wait quite a couple of weeks before they are paid out. And that's again, it's not a very good situation. So if your employees have to wait, for example, till travel expenses are being paid. So how does the solution look like here? We have a quite a, we implement first a an, an data app. So, so the, the people can enter their travel expenses through a standard app. So they make pictures of their receipts, they enter the key information, and then send it to the expense management system. Now we have the data in a structured form. We have all the information available. And then we do data verification, data entry, and we use here business rules. We use business rules to do all these data entries, and we use robots who bridge the gap from the structured data into a, a travel expense management system with um, where you only have a graphical user interface. And what we also have, we have business exceptions. So there is always special cases, there is always cases you're going to deliver to people, and these cases will be decided and implemented by people. And then we have the fast payout here as well, which then allows the employees to get their expenses paid much faster. So th this solution allows to have a consistent quality. So that means robots, they don't make mistakes. I mean, they make mistakes, but only the ones you programmed. And if once they are working, they are working quite consistent, highly scalable. So if there is a day or if there's some peak times on your expenses, you just scale up with robots. You don't need to scale up with people. And you have quite a decent cost reduction possibility. When we, if we look very specific, we're looking at 2,500 travel expenses per day. We're looking at the processing time reduced by about 70%. And we're looking here at the return of invest, which is below one year. And this, again, in these kind of bridge solutions, is a very strong point combined with um, artificial intelligence. Because if you have an ROI below one year, you can always go in and say, we built this robot. And if the new system is available within a year, we replace the robot by a normal standard interface. From my experience, I can tell you, even two or three years later, the robot is usually still there. So what do we have here on the, on the intelligent automations, on the benefits we have, of course, on the customer experience? We can actually shape, we can structure our customer experience. We get all the information. We can optimize our processes. And that's something we do very often. Just automating processes is one thing, but you also need to look at how to optimize them. And this is maybe also something we are offering, which we see for many companies as a benefit, is the combination as a BPO expert. So for example, what we are also often do is we are offering the techno technology solution combined with manual uh, manual exception handling, which allows you, again, to get a fully dressed case. And that's, at the end of the story here, is what we want to do is we structure our data as an end-to-end -end process. And what we are offering here also from, from our perspective, focusing on new technologies, looking at how the market develops, looking at also what can we do and what are the newest trends and the newest possibilities available and offering them in an end-to-end -end scenario. And I think this is also a very important step because the end-to-end -end scenario is the key for your business processes. If you don't have this, if you have just the technology, you also need to integrate them into your processes, which is quite time consuming. And once you have the technology, what are you doing in two years time if there is another company coming up with a much better um, technology. So you need to do the integration work again. And that's one of our key values, our key focus areas, is really to be flexible and to change technologies. It's not so much choosing the best technology, it's much more being flexible and taking new technologies to the market in an end-to-end -end enterprise way as fast as possible. So, so that will be in a short way a little bit about unstructured data, how we approach this, what we can do, and how we can move forward. Thank you very much. Are there any questions?
Okay. Thank you very much.